Al-Qaeda-linked Islamist rebels in Mali have promised to drag France into an Afghanistan-style war. They've launched a counter-offensive after four days of French airstrikes on their northern strongholds. It's January 2013, and a war has returned to Mali. Conflict is nothing new to this West African country. In the aftermath of the 2012 Tuareg Rebellion, Mali was split in two, with a dense, fertile south under the recently couped central government, and the arid, sparsely populated north under the control of three main rebel groups. One of these groups is the National Movement for the Liberation of Azawad, or the MNLA, which is a secular Tuareg organization that seeks the independence of the largely Arab Berber North Mali from the sub-Saharan central government in the south. However, while Tuareg autonomy sparked the North's secession, the MNLA has been pushed to the periphery, as secession has been hijacked by Islamist extremist groups. The most prominent is Ansar Dean, which seeks not the North's independence, but the enforcement of Sharia law in all of Mali. Aligned with them is Mujao, centralized around the city of Giao. They draw support from Al-Qaeda, who tie Mali into the broader Islamist insurgency plaguing the Maghreb and Sahel regions of North Africa. This was the state of Mali through late 2012. However, after the Malian government rejected Ansar Dean's most recent demand to integrate Sharia into its constitution, the conflict reignited. On January 7th, over 1,000 Islamist fighters mass in the vicinity of Bore, motorized by up to 300 pickup trucks. Islamists are closing in on the town of Kona, straddling the Niger River. They approach from Duensa to the east and Coriense to the north, while another element heads south to cut off the Malians' route of retreat back towards Sivari. Using their pickups supported by heavy weapons, the militants move fast and place themselves within Kona by 10 a.m. With incomplete information, indecisiveness from the central government, and a poor supply situation, the Malians withdraw from the city at 11 a.m. This puts the Malians in a dire situation. If left unabated, the capture of Mopti is assured. And if they take the river crossing in Mopti, Mali's capital is only a two days drive away. The Malians need help, and the French are the first to answer the call. When Kona was overran on January 10th, France had no forces in Mali. But as a former colonial power in the region, it remained persistently engaged throughout West Africa. When President Francois Hollande announces France will intervene on the 11th, elements of the 4th Special Forces Helicopter Regiment equipped with cannon and missile-armed gazelles are immediately rerouted from counterterrorism operations in the neighboring Burkina Faso. Within two hours of taking flight, two gazelles engage Islamist convoys heading south from Kona. Strafing at low altitude, at least one militant pickup is destroyed. But, with no support, the gazelles take heavy fire, killing one helicopter's co-pilot and forcing the other one down near Sivari. It's not until a second flight of gazelles arrives that the militant advance is halted and turned back to Kona. Strike jets deployed to the region also become involved, targeting rebel positions. However, it's clear that air support alone will not accomplish France's main objective, help Mali take back its northern territories. The force that France brings to bear will be shaped by the situation. The French will ultimately be limited by their air and sea lift capacity and lean on its allies for heavier air transport. The force needs to deploy quickly and on short notice to meet the present threat, be flexible enough to operate in a highly dispersed environment, and fit the overall concept of operations, which calls for units conducting fast-paced, independent maneuvers with limited sustainment support. As per French doctrine, these conditions call for a lean, highly mobile combined arms task force that can be committed in theater almost immediately. These forces will be drawn from many different units based on who is closest and ready to go. The formation that France will use to meet this challenge is the Joint Tactical Group, or Groupement Tactique Interarm. Roughly equivalent to a British battle group or Russian battalion tactical group, French tactical groups are highly modular. Although France does have permanent regiments, brigades, divisions, and so on, since the 1990s, these echelons have mainly existed to generate tactical groups for overseas deployments. 
tactical groups deployed to the country would be generated from multiple brigades, and once in Mali itself would come under the ad hoc serval brigade. On paper, tactical groups are meant to consist of a command element, usually a regimental command and logistics company, three infantry and one armor company, or vice versa, and support elements as needed, often including engineers and fire elements. These assets then make up reinforced companies called subgroups or SGTIAs, which are the basic building block of French task forces. They essentially look the same as the tactical groups, but at a company scale based on maneuver platoons. To reduce confusion, when we refer to specific SGTIAs, we'll be using the American terminology company team to describe them. France's first conventional unit is airlifted into the Malian capital within 24 hours. Just coming off of a four-month deployment to Chad, this force will later fall under Tactical Group 1 as Company Team 1-1. It consists of an armored infantry company mounted in VAB APCs and the Reconnaissance and Support Company from the 21st Marine Infantry Regiment or RIMA, reinforced by an ERC-90 armored car platoon from the 1st Foreign Cavalry Regiment French Foreign Legion. By 8 a.m. the next day, Company Team 1-2, consisting of an ERC-90 squadron from the 1st Parachute Hussar Regiment and hastily reinforced by an infantry platoon from the 3rd Marine Infantry Parachute Regiment flown in from Gabon, set off on a road march from Côte d'Ivoire. They're accompanied by a combat engineer platoon from the 7th Parachute Engineer Regiment and the 3rd Marine Parachute Regiment's Command and Logistics Company, which will provide command and support for Tactical Group 1. The same day, a VAB company from the 2nd RIMA stationed in France on Gepard Alert, which is France's reserve of emergency response forces, is airlifted into Mali. They will form the basis of Company Team 1-3. When the road convoy reaches Mali on January 14th, the company teams recover and consolidate, bringing together units that were previously in four different countries under unified control within three days. On January 15th, parts of the new Tactical Group 1 begin offensive operations. Company Team 1-1 with its 15 VAB infantry company and three ERC-90s drive some 250 kilometers east of Bamako Airport to secure the bridge dam at Markala. Once there, they take up blocking positions around the Niger River and relieve a contingent of French special forces in Markala, who then make their way north towards the town of Niono. Three days later, farther to the northeast, the town of Kona is retaken by an air land force consisting of 400 Malian soldiers supported by a platoon-sized element of French special forces. Meanwhile, the main French force halts for three days, reinforcing their positions between Kona and Diaboli, while allowing logistics and command and control to be set up in the capital. As regional African troops begin to arrive in the country, the French are relieved in place by Burkinabi and Togolese troops and renew their offensive. On their deep drive into rebel territory, Tactical Group 1 splits into two prongs. Infantry Company Teams 1-1 and 1-3 wing north, with their ultimate objectives being to secure the border with Mauritania and seize the town of Timbuktu. Armored Company Team 1-2, meanwhile, continues northeastward towards Gao. Together, Gao and Timbuktu account for 95% of North Mali's population. On January 21st, the Northern Prong captures Diaboli, and the Southern Prong reaches the town of Duensa, which the Malians captured the same day. While Tactical Group 1 makes their initial gains, French High Command is making preparations to bring their forces to brigade strength. On January 21st, the highly mechanized Tactical Group 2 sets sail from France. They're carried by the Dix Mood, a Mr. Class amphibious assault ship escorted by the corvette Lieutenant du Vaisseau Louis Neff. It consists of two mechanized infantry companies from the 92nd Infantry Regiment mounted in VBCI infantry fighting vehicles, as well as a reconnaissance squadron from the 1st RIMA with a mix of VBLs and VABs armed with 20mm autocannons, a reduced artillery battery of four Caesar self-propelled howitzers from the 68th African Artillery Regiment, and an engineer company from the 31st Engineers. 
Two days later, airborne units on Gepard Alert from the 2nd Foreign Parachute Regiment and 17th Airborne Engineers are deployed to Côte d'Ivoire to stage for airborne operations. On January 25th, Company Team 1-2 recaptures Hambore along Route Nationale 16. The same day, Special Forces from the 1st Marine Parachute Regiment and Air Parachute Commando No. 10 capture the Wabaria Bridge crossing the Niger River, enabling Allied troops to move on the city of Gao. At 12.50 a.m. on the 26th, Air Force Commandos are inserted onto the runway of the Gao Airfield via two Puma helicopters. They find the airport undefended, and before sunrise, three C-160s and one C-130 conduct an air landing movement, dropping off a company team from the 1st Parachute Chasseur Regiment who take over security of the airport. Positions in Gao are further reinforced by Armored Company Team 1-2 and a large contingent of African troops to become the new center of Serval Brigade operations. Meanwhile, the advance of the Northern Prong is progressing. In the lead-up to the attack on Timbuktu, an infantry company consisting of 250 foreign legionnaires supported by a parachute commando platoon from the 2nd Foreign Paratroopers conducts a night drop north of the city, cutting off avenues of egress. When infantry company teams 1-1 and 1-3 move in that day, they take the city with no resistance. Simultaneously off in the east, special forces take the airfield at Kadal via a helicopter assault deep in Tuareg country. The raid is carried out by a platoon-sized element of Air Force and Navy commandos, supported by two Tiger attack helicopters, a Gazelle, and four Puma transports. The city itself is secured by 1,800 Chadian troops who arrive to stage for later operations in the Ifoga Mountains. More paratroopers, special forces, and engineers are dropped onto Tesla Airport in the country's extreme northeast, effectively boxing the Islamists into the Ifoga Mountain region. The airport is further secured by an element of paratroopers that are airlanded in. By mid-February, the French African force begins its transition from fast-paced maneuver to a footmobile slog through rugged terrain and a hot climate. The new Tactical Group 3 arrives and relieves the original Tactical Group 1, who returned to France on February 17th. The new group includes one of TAC Group 1's VAB infantry companies from the 2nd Rima, another VAB company from the 126th Infantry Regiment, and two AMX-10 RC armored car squadrons, one from the 1st Rima and another from the Marine Infantry Tank Regiment. They're supported by an engineer company, two reduced batteries from the 11th Marine Artillery Regiment, one of which has two Caesar self-propelled howitzers, while the other has four 120mm mortars. Further, after a long drive from the port in Senegal, TAC Group 2 arrives in the Malian capital on February 12th. With these forces in country, the next phase of the operation is to assault Ansardine and Al-Qaeda holdouts in the Ifoga Mountains. The mechanized Tactical Group 3 will attack from the west, while the airborne Tactical Group 4 will attack from the north. The latter, after regrouping, consists of four airborne infantry companies, an airborne engineer platoon, tactical air controllers, and a commando platoon. This force will be supported by several helicopters contained within the Serval Brigade's Air Mobile Group. Meanwhile, 800 Chadian troops will attack from the east, all the while, the freshly arrived Tactical Group 2 will remain in the south, taking on counterinsurgency operations against Mujao holdouts in the vicinity of Gao. The battle, under the codename Operation Panther, commences on February 18th and lasts until March 31st, resulting in a French Chadian victory that significantly decreases the Islamists' conventional means of waging war. After the battle's conclusion, Groups 3 and 4 move south, joining Group 2 in stability operations in the Gao Kidal region. As the French shift from high to low intensity operations, all three of its tactical groups are relieved on May 11th by one tactical group, GTIA Desert. Operation Serval officially came to an end on July 15th, transitioning into the counterinsurgency focused Operation Barkhan.
Overall, Operation Serval showcased the flexible expeditionary character of the French army through its ability to rapidly pull together mixed task forces and bring about impressive effects on the ground. But it was also indicative of a doctrine that was validated during colonial action during the Cold War and continues to be primarily used in post-colonial asymmetric conflicts against technologically inferior foes. The case acknowledged the shortcomings of the French army in terms of what kind of force it could support. As case in point, the whole brigade only had six howitzers and four 120mm mortars as artillery support. But at the same time, French units kept on the move almost constantly, with the commander of Tactical Group 3 bragging that he stayed in contact with the enemy for six weeks straight with no pause for maintenance, all the while clocking up to 5,000 kilometers. Broadly speaking, sustainment measures like stopping to maintain vehicles were kept at an absolute minimum in order to maintain momentum. The primary sustainment priorities were food, fuel, and water. It should be noted, the entire French force was mounted on wheeled platforms, which have lower maintenance and sustainment requirements compared to tracked vehicles. Although the operation turned out to be strategically inconclusive, as North Mali is still at war, the operational victory brought about by Operation Serval is undeniable. But this was a big picture look. If you'd like to see how France organizes its infantry at the lowest tactical levels, check out this video on the newest organization and weapons of the French infantry squad.